the Latin definition historically for virus. Originally and historically, virus meant and means venom. So I started to wonder, well, what about the name Corona? Does it have a Latin definition or a definition at all? So I actually looked up what's the definition. And on dictionary.com, it brings up 13 definitions. Corona, religiously, ecclesiastically, means gold ribbon at the base of a miter. And I didn't know what a miter was. So I copied it and pasted it and then hit images. I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. So this actually could read the Pope's venom pandemic. It also can read crown. Corona means crown also in Latin terms. Corona means crown. Visually, we see kings represented with a crown symbol. Right. So put that together for me. King Cobra Venom. It actually could read King Cobra Venom pandemic. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. I've said this for about a year now that I actually believe this is more of a religious war on the entire world. Uh, I've been adamant about that actually. The message of Christ forever was, he's the master healer. And faith precedes all miracles, not vaccines. He made a blind man see. Right. He touched the leper. So why are we actually trust putting more faith in drugs? And why is a man of the cloth supposedly putting more faith in science and a drug than he is in telling people to pray to God? God's greatest creation was you. And you are made up of a DNA strand of genetics that are unique to you. If I was going to do something incredibly evil, how ironic would it be that the Catholic Church or whoever would use the one symbol of an animal that represents evil in all religion, which is either the snake or the dragon, which is actually just a snake with legs. You take that snake or that serpent and you figure out how to isolate genes from that serpent and get those genes of that serpent to insert itself into your God-given created DNA? Have you heard of the Pope's audience hall, also known as the Pope, the sixth audience hall, or the hall of the pontifical audiences? It lies partially in Vatican City and partially in Rome, Italy, named after Pope Paul VI, and built in 1971 by Italian architect Pier Luigi Nervi. It seats 6,300 and contains a bronze statue called La Resurrezione, designed by Pericol Fazzini within. This all sounds pretty straightforward so far, but let's dive into what makes this building so strange. We'll start with the less weird and get progressively weirder as we go. The building was designed with reinforced concrete by well-known architect Pierre Luigi Nervi. Nervi is known for simple yet practical designs that are strong and made to last. Have a look at the image below and compare its shape to the image of a snake beside it. Note the overall shape, wide back, narrow, rounded front, eyes in the middle, nostril at the front, and curved top. As you can already see, in the image above, there are two windows on either side of the building that resemble eyes. They are made of stained glass and sit about halfway through the building's length on either side. In the center of the eye shape, you begin to see a slit that could resemble a reptile eye. Maybe looking at one window on its own isn't the most clear, so let's have a look at both of them together now. All of a sudden, we begin to see things taking shape here. Two reptilian eyes staring at you as you observe the stage. Have a look again at the image above. What do you notice down the center? There stands what looks to be a statue in the middle and then on either side two sharp pointed fangs. The building's roof and sides also resemble scales. Here are two more images to give you a sense of the scales. Now let's pull it together a bit more so we can really see what we're looking at. 
In the image below, really pay attention to the whole building and stage layout next to the image of a snake. The eyes, the shape, the scales, the fangs, the look and feel of the reptile, it's all there. In the middle of the stage sits a statue of Christ rising from an atomic apocalypse. It was designed by Pericle Fazzini and put in place by 1977. Have a look at it below. Do you notice anything about Jesus' head? It's difficult to see from the front, but when you view the statue from the sides, where patrons would sit, it becomes strikingly clear from both sides that the head of Jesus is meant to look like that of a snake. Think about it for a moment. If just one side of the statue gave the impression of a snake's head, we could brush this off as coincidence, but when it looks this way from all angles, and the entire building resembles a snake as well, it becomes much more difficult to ignore. One must begin to realize that this was purposefully designed to appear this way. The thought and planning that went into this would have to have been immense. The reality is, there is an obvious reason for this imagery. You may be asking what that reason is. Why was this building built in such a way that the Pope appears to be speaking from the mouth of a reptile? I believe we're getting closer to the third stage when it comes to understanding who truly runs and has influence over our world, which is why this snake symbolism exists here. I think this is the plan all along, was to get the serpents, the evil ones, DNA into your God created DNA and they figured out how to do it with this mRNA technology. They're using mRNA, which is mRNA extracted from, I believe, the king cobra venom. The king cobra venom. And I think they want to get that venom inside of you and make you a hybrid of Satan, no longer just belonging to God or a creation of God's. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. 